Hey there, friends. It is Ben again. I am at my office where my head is cold, so I'm going to wear a hat. Uh, this is a video to help you figure out what's going on with uh, the assignment for, gosh, Thursday, May the 4th. May the 4th be with you. Ah. So what we're looking at today is something called web scraping. Web scraping can be a whole class. So I'm not going to try to teach you everything about it. Amongst other things, I don't know all that much about it. But I thought I would ask you all to do an assignment that I think is kind of neat. And uh, it led to having to figure out several things, at least for me. And I figured that's probably going to get you to do some things. And that's kind of the point of this class is for you to learn some little things and get some practice just thinking, you know. So <clears throat> anyway, uh, there will be a link to the uh, automate the boring stuff book that's online that we've looked at and so i i'm going to give you a couple of routes that you can go to accomplish this the first route is open up the book see if you can get that stuff to work i think the book's solution does things in a nice way um, but i'm doing things in a slightly different way OK, the motivation for why I did it in a different way actually is that I thought I would be clever. And I said, hey, chat GPT, why don't you write a script that will do this for me? It said, sure, no problem. And it gave me a script. And I was like, great. And then I ran it and it doesn't work. And when I analyzed why it wouldn't work. I got an idea of what it was doing, and I think that its approach is better, but that the technical details of it, it just didn't know what it was doing. And when we get to that point, I'm going to show you why I don't know why anyone would think it would work. It just it did something stupid. So anyway, so the task at hand is that we're going to get uh, we're going to get a Jupyter notebook to download a bunch of web comics. OK, to which you say, I don't want to download a bunch of web comics. Maybe you don't even find this web con comic funny. But the trick with this is that we're going to learn how to scrape things out of a web page because this will involve looking at how a web page is constructed. And if you understand how to do this, then you can set up uh, scripts yourself that would pull a bunch of resources all at once. And this is that automate the boring stuff idea at hand, because sometimes you need to download a thousand small files and you don't want to. Well, I'm sorry, you don't want to do it by hand. You can literally sit there and click, 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 and just do them. But you won't, you know? So anyway, the webcomic in question is one called XKCD. I have no idea what that stands for, but XKCD is a long running webcomic, apparently has 2,770 panels so far, or strips so, so far. Um, it is not very sophisticated art, just stick figures. It features a lot of math and computer jokes. So, of course, I think it's great. But anyway, <clears throat> so let's take a look um, at the, at what we're doing and let's look at how ChatGPT tried to solve it. And then we'll look at how I tried to solve it. Okay. And those will be different. 
So let me find my share screen button and we are gonna share screen and take a look at XKCD, okay? So this is today's uh, strip and I'm gonna close something there and show you how to open it yourself. So uh, the strip, you can read it yourself um, and it's just got something funny going on with it, all right? But you have a bunch of uh, a bunch of these web comics that generally have four panels <clears throat> and they're all saved in basically the same way. Okay. And uh, when you look at a simple web page like this, notice there's not much to it, you can right click and choose the inspect feature here. And you can actually see what the web page is. Lots of times people get the impression that web pages are like one big picture or something. But in actuality, they're written using hypertext markup language, HTML, um, and then maybe some other things like JavaScript and so forth. This one here is pretty nice in that you can see, can I make that larger? Sorry, I can't zoom in but I have this piece here and it shows me the top, middle, and bottom containers and highlights them as I go along. I want to look here at this middle container. And so I open that up and notice it has this div thing all the, over the place, but more to the point right here, it says, a href equals https colon slash slash images or imgs.xkcd.com slash comic slash t a p e t u m underscore l u yeah lucidum dot png. Okay. So that link right there, or alternately, let's see if I can see where else this is at. Alternately, right where? Yeah, sorry, I spotted there's someplace else on the page that has this as well. But we are going to be looking at how to get that information right there. Okay. So, as I mentioned, we are uh, we are looking at this using a program. And I started by asking ChatGPT what to do. And it gave me a script, which I will show you here. Okay. So taking a look across that, uh, this one I can actually zoom in on. We can look line by line at what it's doing. So the first thing it does is import something called requests. And as we do the requests later on, we'll see what that does. It says import OS. That's for operating system. You, this is necessary to do anything about uh, paths and directories and, and uh, saving files and stuff like that. And then BS4, the BS is for beautiful soup. Um, I have the suspicion that it originally meant something else. And they changed it to mean beautiful soup because that was uh, more polite. But it's importing beautiful soup. <clears throat> and then we go ahead here and use a URL. Notice all a URL is, is a string. It has a certain format, but that's all that it is. Um, if you know a little bit more about web browsers, you would know, you'll know that that string gets sent to something called a DNS server. The DNS server looks up locations and it reports back what's called an IP number. <clears throat> There's no way we're going to work with IP numbers. Okay, that would just be crazy. So, <clears throat> but we've got the URL here saved in the great way thing called the URL. And then we say response requests get URL. 
So that's going to send the URL out there and uh, get the appropriate web page for it. Okay. Then beautiful soup here. We say soup equals beautiful soup response dot content. So that response that we got of getting the URL, this is going to get the content of it. And it's going to pass this to something that parses HTML. Parsing just means that it breaks it up in a way that will make some more sense to the reader. Okay. And then it comes in here and says, go to soup, find all of these aids. So when you look at uh, HTML code, it has these tags that are between pointy brackets and a certain kind of them that has links will say a href equals and then they'll give a url so the a that you've got there identifies what kind of a link that it is and then we got this portion here that's just setting up things to know how to uh, store the downloaded images so we are, uh, I've got this in a folder on my desktop called uh, Web Scrape. And it checks inside that and whether or not that XKCD Comics subfolder exists. One, if it exists, it will not do anything. So see how it says, if not exists. Um, so if it doesn't exist, then it goes ahead and tells the OS to make that directory. So the first time that I ran this, it made that directory, and then we could refer to it later. Uh, fortunately, uh, it does not try to make that directory again. I'm not going to end up, when I run this five times to get it to work, I'm not going to end up with a bunch of different directories with the same or similar names. Y'all had that, some of y'all had that happening because you ran code that was making a file the other day and it might not overwrite the file. It might just, you know, make a new one. So that can run into problems. Okay, here is the guts of the program that really does stuff. So bear with me as we run along in this, but... Uh, it does a for loop here. Remember earlier I said links got all of those a, a h reference things. So this goes through and treats links as a list and takes each one individually. I thought that was kind of clever. Links was the collective and you said for each link in, in links. So that link, we're going to get whatever's in the h reference tag. So when you have those tags, they will have an A to say what kind of tag it is, and then href equals, and then they'll put a URL. So this is going to yank out the URL there. So here is where this started to go wrong. Uh, it said, if href dot starts with the, the forward slash, remember forward slashes and backslashes are different, okay? But uh, somebody had looked at the code of the web page and saw that at the time, the thing that they wanted to deal with, the image URL, started with a backslash or started with a forward slash. And I guess was the only thing on the page that did. And that's changed. But so if it doesn't start with a forward slash, it's not going to do it. So all of the stuff on the page that starts with an HTTPS colon, <clears throat> it's just going to ignore it because that wasn't one that started with the right kind of stuff. So then it takes and makes the URL for the image by putting HTTPS colon xkcd.com, and then the slash, whatever that href was, that was giving the place 
that the file, the picture file was stored at. So with that image URL, it's going to pass that to the requests.get. Remember how earlier request.get got the web page for us? Now, if you tell it to get something which is actually a picture file, it's going to make a virtual copy of that picture file for, um, for the program. Then we're going to construct the file name of the image that we want to save under. And it says file name OS path join. So directory, which we already had, directory was going to be x xkcd underscore comics, right? And then it says href of everything after the first, well, after the second character. So that href had a slash and then a name after it. And so it, it's going to not include that, but have this other stuff. So um, when it tried to do this, it ran into some errors um, with, with stuff that happened after that. But it says, with open file name WB as F. I am just not used to this, but every time I've seen the open command, it's always said a with and um, and done this kind of thing here. So apparently this is going to open a file with whatever file name said it was, and it's going to refer back to it as F when we say to write to that file. Okay. Um, treat that kind of like kind of like it's magic. You just have to make it work that sort of way. But then it says that it's going to print uh, what it downloaded. So it's a format statement here. And it's going to put file name wherever it downloaded that. Or what it, wherever it's, yeah, after where it, what it's downloaded. So when I ran this, it said that it downloaded xkcd underscore comics archive. That's not a picture file. Then it said it downloaded xkcd comics slash about and slash adam.xml. So those were links that had the appropriate format to them, and it tried to do that. And then it gave me an error saying there's no such file or directory xkcd underscore comics slash newsletter. So I'm not quite sure what happened there. Okay. But I tried to trace it down. And one thing that I noticed while trying to trace it down is that this is pointing at an archive. This ultimately is the reason why I decided to stick with this code and show you how to fix it because this thing of having a page that links to a bunch of stuff, that's actually a skill I think you might want to have to be able to get a bunch of stuff all at once like this. So um, I think that the version that your textbook does, does something with finding the link and clicking on it and going back. That's also a good way to go. Okay. But I think that this is something that might be more useful to the data analyst. So, all right, looking at my errors here, I'd said it had a problem with the open. So I went back and said, what was the directory that we were dealing with? And it was the XKCD comics. Okay. And I said, um, what were the links? Oh, and I think I must have. Yeah, somebody showed me yesterday how to minimize those. So my links, the square bracket tells me that we've got a list here and the commas between them. And this first one uh, was for an archive. And this next one's for something else. The next one's for something else. None of these were image files. And so, 
And there's a lot of them, right? Uh, if we go back there and look at the, the page that we have the URL for, we would see that it has links to stuff from 2023 going back. I think it's, I think it's going back to 2006. It's, it's a really large archive, but each one, it is linking to a folder and the folder then will have within it a file called index.html that when you go to the folder automatically loads and does this stuff. But then each of those is going to have exactly the same formatting. So I click through some of them to make sure about that. They're all written exactly the same, but there's 2,770 of them. Okay, so it's can't it's just not possible for them to have formatted each one of those separately. They had to have been using uh, something with cascading style sheets or something like that. Okay, so um, so I went further and checked to make sure that links and I, I figured out the fifteenth one was the link for this twenty seven seventy. And I checked to see about this function. Could I could I take that function instead of begins with? Is there an ends with function? There is. So I tried to do some stuff with that. Um, but yeah. The yeah, this setup that chat GPT attacked this with wasn't going to work because the web page itself had changed. However, opening up several of those uh, web pages from the archive, I was able to look at the formatting on them. And, oops, it's about to hit the wrong button there. Let me share screen and we will look at that. Okay, actually, before we look at that, let me point at the archive itself. Okay, so the archive here is a web page that they've set things up in an automated way that every day it will just add another thing to this. And so if you click on one of these, it will lead you to a page kind of like that first one we looked at. Um, I'll just do this, this one here now. Okay, and if you inspect the pieces of them, they always have the picture in the middle container. And here is an ahref for it. And um, I think that's what they refer to as the permalink. But also, they're going to have an image in here. Where is the image? Permalink uh, image for hotlink embedding. Yep, I'm having a hard time finding it now, but, oh, here, yeah. But I've spotted that this images, IMGS, XKCD.com, comics, and then overlapping circles is the actual name of the file. Now, there's no way for me to go get each one of those independently, but I figured we can probably do some figuring here. Each one of these is in a file that goes https colon slash slash xkcd.com slash then a number. Okay. And then in that uh, file, you've got uh, this ahref equals, but also somewhere here. And I'm maybe having a hard time finding it. Um, yep. Yep. Here we go. Somewhere here, I was finding this sort of thing. I don't know if you can see it, but it says ING SRC equals, and then stuff that starts with two slashes. Okay. So, 
what we're going to do is to write some code that looks that looks in here, opens the web page, uh, uh, and instead of pulling the A tags, we're going to pull the IMG tags. So if you know HTML, every picture is actually placed with a tag that says IMG SRC equals quotes, and then the name uh, of the, not the name, the location of the picture file. So we're going to take advantage of that. And so that was that. Uh, so we were working, looking at what ChatGPT gave us. And now we're going to look at what Ben is giving us. So my version of it starts out the same. We're going to need requests in the OS and the beautiful soup. And we're going to need to tell it to make a directory if we don't already have a directory. Okay. But after we get through that, our loop that we've got is going to be a completely different sort of animal. Right. And so I will, I will say to y'all that uh, the first time that I ran this, I screwed up my for loop. But for loops, you tell it what the variable is you want to loop through. You tell it range. And you tell it where you want it to start, where you want it to stop, and the step size. I messed that up earlier and couldn't get it to run. And it was very frustrating. But uh, the thing that I had done was to swap the start and stop locations. So... Um, then I also uh, went ahead and tried to let it run down and get all 2,000 of these. And I realized I was going to uh, kind of fill up my hard drive. So I said, eh, let's just get like 10 of them. That, that's, that's, that makes our point, right? So <clears throat> um, we're going to be doing this for loop. And the URL on each one of these steps is going to start with this https colon xkcd.com and then we're going to turn the i the index that we're stepping through uh, we're going to turn it into a string and <clears throat> add that on the end and that will say what it is that we want to open so uh, our response we're going to make the request for the url and then soup is going to do this html parser for it and then the links that we've got there, we're going to find all of the links for images. Now, the thing is, you're not going to get only the images uh, of the comic strip. There's also going to be the banner and, uh, so, and some button pictures and stuff like that. So we've got to kind of figure out which one's the right one by looking at the formatting of it. Okay. And the way you do that is to right click on your web page and to ask it to inspect. And then you look through stuff from that. But like before, we're going to loop through the links and grab each one in particular. And then we're going to say that our href is going to be to take the link and get what's inside of its SRC property, okay? So that is going to get out the name of an image. And then if that starts with this, okay, a common thing somebody will do if they're storing a bunch of files of the same nature is to put them all into a single subdirectory. And that lets them set up these web pages in a very systematic way and minimizes the amount of work they have to do later. So uh, if it starts with that, then we do the things that follow. If it doesn't start with that, we don't bother. We don't want the banner and we don't want the other pieces that might be in there, just the web comic. If you're doing something similar uh, with a program pulling the PDFs for, say, a bunch of owner's manuals or something, then hey, you would 
uh, you would ask it to loop through something like that and only take the ones that had a certain format maybe, okay? But with that, we're gonna get our response variable again, where we again request the, um, the web page, right? And then uh, the image name that, oh, I'm sorry, I should say more. When you ask it to give, give the response, and this time it's not a web page, but rather an image file, it'll end with a .png, it doesn't get back then an HTML uh, page. It actually gets back a virtual copy of the image. Okay. And then we're going to have to put together what that image name is in order to uh, in order to be able to have a unique identifier to save it under. So the thing I came up with, since we had done all that splitting stuff on the PDF assignment, I realized that that, uh, that URL that we had is split up with these slashes. And in particular, the last piece after the last slash is going to be the name we want for the file. So if we go ahead and split it on the slashes, and then after you split it, put a minus one, that will take the last thing. So that will get us the piece that we want. So call that image name. And then our file name is going to be taking the directory and then putting image name on at the end of it. Okay. And then we do have to use this with open statement, just like it was before. And then we want to go ahead and have this print statement in there so that the person watching this run doesn't just go, I don't know if it worked or not. Because <clears throat> hypothetically, somebody could sit there for half an hour going, I don't know if this is doing anything. Um, <laughs> and they might not know whether or not they should halt the process. So if you update them, then they know. Okay. So if we look at running this, we run the first segment of it, we run the second segment of it, and then we run the third segment of it. And it's gonna do it again, and you can see how it's plopping things on there. Ooh, actually it did it faster than it did earlier. I've waited until people went home from work and the, the network is easier to deal with. So anyway, I don't want you to have the uh, mistaken image that I know what I'm doing. I wrote code to do this, and it did not work. And so the thing that I did to figure out why it wouldn't work is I looked at my for loop here, and I just executed each step individually to see what was going wrong, because I knew that when I came to an error, that would tell me what to do to fix it. This is an important thing that you all might do. Uh, running code um, and you know coming along with it. If we had a more sophisticated programming system, we could set up breakpoints and watches in order to see what the variable values are, are. but we don't, so. Um, so in any case, I went ahead and said to it, okay, let's do the one that we start with and say, put that 200, that 2770 on the end. Does it do what I think it did? Turns out it did. Then I said, hey, let's do that response thing. Does the response do what I think it did? I don't know. It says it's got 200 things. So, uh, so then I said, hey, um, let's feed the response content to the parser and see what we got. And lo and behold, that's a web page. So I recognize, uh, recognize what it was doing or what it is based on having looked at it with the inspector. But 
uh, I went ahead here and said, okay, let's look at one of the links. And so I asked it to print one of the links and it showed me what that, that was from here. And then I said, href, go ahead and get one of those links and show me what that is. And, or I, I'm sorry, get what's in the source. And where is SRC on here? So SRC, and so it is indeed pulling out that segment of, of the tag there, okay? So then once I had stored that into href, I tried out my starts with and my ends with to see whether um, I was going to get a true out of it, and I did, so that was what I was hoping to get. And then I went ahead and said response, requests, get. And I had to try this a bit. Uh, I tried this without the HTTPS and it, it gave me an error. And then I eventually figured out that I needed to put that at the beginning. So then it says it's got this response that I can't really tell anything about. But I went ahead and said, okay, why don't we go ahead and take image name? And at first I didn't put the minus one on there. I, eh, I just had it split it and print it out and see what it was. And then I said, let's do the bracket minus one. And it did indeed get me the name of the um, file that I was wanting. And then I went ahead and said file name equals directory and image name and I got that to print out and it worked and then I went ahead and uh, told it to do the save and it did it and after I had uh, parsed out several little mistakes I'd made in typing there I eventually figured out that I just messed up something with a loop and so that was that made me feel pretty dumb but, but it has said to us that it has saved all these files. And if I look back here to what's in my directory, see, I've got web script. Yeah, make that bigger. I've got the web scrape directory and it made this directory. And it has saved a whole bunch of PNG files here. But in this uh, archive and axiom, uh, ad, ad, Adam. XML, those were things that uh, came out of the chat GPT thing. But let's see if I click on one of those, it shows me just the picture. Okay. But that gets you there. That is code that will actually make this work. How might you use this? Well, I will show you just a quick example here of something I might do. And um, and let me see. actually, I've got to check and see whether this works or not. So give me just a second here, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Um, so sharing with you real quick here. This is, this is a website that I happened upon that and um, archives a bunch of old game stuff. And I have the general feeling that probably some of it is not there legally. But if I follow down to Dungeons and Dragons stuff from first edition, which is like some of it's approaching 50 years out of print, um, I can get stuff there okay so here is 
a list of this bunch of files that somebody has archived that maybe I might want to get. And I don't want to sit there and click, click, click in order to get each one of those. So uh, I could hypothetically set up my Python program and tell it to just download all these. Man, that'd be a lot of downloading because those are big files. But you might have something like that, which is maybe less questionable in its legality, you know, um, <clears throat> where you're wanting to get a bunch of data files that are stored through uh, through GitHub or something like that. And if you can see how the page stores stuff, especially when it's a large collection of things, then you can set up a program that just goes through and loops through the list of them. Okay. So anyway, probably should not have shown you a that uh, particular website, but it's it's one that I know is sitting out there. So anyway, uh, this hopefully is something useful to y'all. Uh, if it's not, well, <clears throat> it's it's a skill that you might pick up. All right. I'm going to leave it at that, and I will see you all soon. Bye.